What's up guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're in Galatians chapter 5, probably the most famous chapter, and we're going to get Galatians. into that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. So today, the chapter's talking about freedom of the Christian. What I love about this chapter and about this book is it tells us how to live for Christ. Um, Paul is really good about the practical things of what it is to follow Christ. And maybe because he went through a time where he realized, hey, I'm doing this all the wrong way. And the Lord helped lead him to following him well. And that's exactly my story. As I followed Christ, um, I lived like these, these people who are deceived, who are tricked into thinking the law and following the, the way of the law and the word of the law and focusing on the law was the way to follow Christ. And the Lord allowed me, he allowed my eyes to be open and to show me there's such a better way to follow, um, to follow God. And it's not focusing on the law, it's focusing on him himself. And so in the beginning, it says, for freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. So before we're in Christ, we are slaves to sin. We're slaves to our flesh and the sin nature that we are born with. And when we get saved, we are no longer a slave to that because Christ died for us and we can have a relationship with him and he defeated sin and he defeated death. And so we no longer have to be a slave to those things. We have a way out of those things, um, but the way out is not checking off each list of the law and focusing on that. The way out of that slavery is focusing on the Lord. And that's what Paul wants them to see. They have been deceived and they've been tricked by a small group of uh, people who say, hey, Jewish people who are saying, hey, but don't forget the law. Don't forget circumcision. Don't forget all this. Paul said, if you, if you have to keep circumcision, if it's that important, you're going to have to keep all of the law. And he tells them, do not be deceived by these people. Watch out for people who are hindrances in um, in you following Christ. He said, y'all were on a great path. Y'all were doing great. And now you were chasing after God and now you're chasing after the law all because of what a small group of people says. And he even says the famous uh, phrase like a little leaven uh, leavens the whole batch of dough. So um, what he's saying is watch out for those people in your life that are gonna take you off of that are going to take your focus off of God. And not only watch out for them, don't be one of those people who take others' focus off of God because judgment uh, will come. He said, whoever does that will pay a penalty. And so what is so great about this section is that in my own life, just putting this into practice, um, say I'm working on different aspects of following Christ. Maybe I'm working on fruit of the spirit that we're going to talk about in a second at the end of this chapter. Maybe I want, maybe I need more self-control in my life, or maybe I need to get rid of a certain sin in my life. And so if I'm focusing on, let me get rid of that sin. Let me get rid of that sin. Let me work towards that and get rid of that sin. What is my mind focusing on? That sin works doing that. If I say, I need more self-control, let me work to have more self-control. Give me more self-control. What is my mind focusing on? Self-control. Self-control. How much time and how much brain space am I giving God? How much am I focusing on God? Not very much. And so it's great <clears throat> to pursue this life of righteousness. It's great to pursue a life full of fruit, but pursuing the fruit itself or pursuing to get rid of <clears throat> sin itself is not the way to do it but focusing on christ is the thing that's the key when you focus on christ all falls into place when you focus on law or anything else it's taking your focus off of christ you miss christ altogether. um and when you love god the fruit will be the overflow keeping the law will be the overflow of that focus of god um, righteousness, sanctification, that will be the overflow when you focus on God. And so it's that easy, y'all. Like, we don't have to focus on every tidbit of problems in our life, every sin that we have. 
every struggle that we have. Instead, when we focus on God, he takes care of all of those things. He does the doing, one of my favorite phrases. And so um, he talks about, I loved verses 13 through 15. He talks about freedom. A lot of times I have seen some good Christian friends that talk about freedom, but what they're doing is they're abusing the freedom. They're wanting freedom and they're praising God for freedom so that they can see how close to sin they can get. Freedom was not given to us for that reason. We, we aren't to use freedom to see how close to sin we can get, to see what we can get away with. Instead, we are to use freedom for good. It says, use freedom to do good works, to love others very well. That's what we are free to do. And when you use that freedom in that way, you feel more and more freedom. You feel joy. And then at the very end, we have two different lists. And it says, do not live by the flesh, but live by the spirit. For those who live by the flesh, these are your symptoms. These are your signs. And it says tons of different things. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy. And you guys know, like, if your sin problem is not listed in there, I promise it's part of that. But then it says, this is the evidence of the Spirit. Your life is led by the Spirit. And that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so when you are focused on Christ, the things that, the evidence of the flesh, those are the things that fall away. And the evidence of the Spirit, those are the things that show up and overflow out of our life and into the lives of others and those around us. Jax, I know the fruit of the Spirit was your big right. section today. So, um, really, when you talk about Galatians 5, you, the fruit of the Spirit is one of those things you can't leave out because it's just so famous and it's one of those things that every Christian ought to know, I feel like. And so, Paul, he starts off this chapter and um, he's encouraging um, these new believers, like the Gentile new believers, um, to keep pursuing God instead of the law. And he tells them that this uh, should be the overflow that comes out of their lives. And um, that's where we get the fruit of the Spirit from. That's right. Because if, if we have the Spirit inside of us, the Holy Spirit, then uh, we are like um, plants that should produce fruit. And we shouldn't be producing rotten fruit um, like those listed in there, but we should be producing... Um, those that only the Spirit can produce, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so um, I just think it's really important um, to mention that and talk about that because um, that's uh, one of the key signs of having um, God in our lives um, if we produce that fruit. That's exactly right. And I love what you just said, like this phrase. You said, if we are focusing on God... The Spirit produces fruit in our mm -hmm. lives. That's what we have to cling to. It's not us that produces the fruit. We are incapable of doing that on our own. It's the Spirit in us that does that. And so we can work all day, but us on our own without God's help, we will not produce this, this overflow of good fruit. I love what Tony Evans said about this chapter. He said, spiritual freedom is living a thank you life and a want to life rather than living a have to life. We are to seek to please God and gain approval for our obedience because of our acceptance, not to earn it. This is where I was messing up. I was living a have to life and not I'm the loser that finds joy in that. I love rules and I love to keep the rules. And so it wasn't even that, it wasn't miserable until I realized I cannot keep these laws on my own. That's what the law is for. It points us to our need for God because we cannot keep those things on our own. But what's so much better and what's so much more beautiful is living a life where it's like, God, you're so good to me. You love me so well. I owe you my life. I'm going to give you my life because thank you because of your goodness or because I want to. Another thing Tony Evans said, God is not looking for obedience through law keeping. He's looking for obedience motivated by love that naturally comes from faith. Jesus, the Bible tells us that God knows that we love him when we obey him and we keep his commandments. And not in a checklist way, but in an overflow way. Only through the Spirit. 
he knows that we are fully surrendered to him. So followers of the way keep their focus on God and God takes care of the rest. He takes care of that overflow. He grows the fruit of the spirit in us and he takes care of all of that. He gets rid of the sin in our lives. So let's do our best to keep our focus on God and watch him do the work in our hearts and in our lives. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow for chapter six. Bye. Bye.